Hello everybody and welcome back to another math learning video. Today I brought you guys this creature and what we're tasked to do, we're tasked to find out the area of his red nose here. And we need to figure out what is the area of that nose. And we are given that from the area of his eyeball, so the middle of the circle to the edge of the circle is 5, which means that the radius of these eyes or these circles, the radius of these circles is 5. And that is all the information that we are giving and we know that the nose, the square, borders these circles here so they touch. Okay? And using this information we need to figure out the area of the red nose. So that means that since the radius is 5 that means that the area from this middle of the eye, the very middle, to, for example, here would be 5. And using this information, we can set up an equation that we can solve for with using the Pythagorean theorem. So when we use the Pythagorean theorem, we need to have a right triangle. So we need to get a right triangle here that would be of use to us. And to do that, we can, we know that this side length is 5. Side length to here would be 5. And then from the side length of this where the square and circle intersect to here would not be 5, but it's also a side length. I'm going to call it Y. And here we have a right angle, which means that this triangle here is a right triangle with the right angle here. So what are the side lengths? So we know that this side length here is 5. Let me write on this side to make it seem a little bit big, better. And this side length is Y. But this side length we do not know yet because the whole side length is 5. But the part of the triangle is only a part of it. So let us call the side length of the square. Since this is a square right in the middle, that means every side is the same side. So let's call this square its side length x. Okay? So that means all of these sides are x. And if we look here, this side length of the square here is the exact same height as this side length here. Which means that the missing side of our triangle, we can write it as 5, the whole length, minus x, which is this side length. So, for our right triangle, we have the equation of, so the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the length of the hypotenuse, right? And the hypotenuse is this side here opposite opposite of the right angle so we need the two so since our c would be 5 our a and b would be y and 5 minus x squared so it doesn't matter what order they are so I'm gonna put 5 minus x squared plus b would be y squared is equal to c squared, 5 squared, which is 25, right? So I'm going to leave this equation as is for right now because what I want to do to solve for our x eventually is I want to get another equation that has an x in it so then we can use substitution to figure out our value for x. But for that I need to figure out another equation and in order to do that I'm going to once again use the lines in the circles. So if this line to here is 5, and then that means that this line to here is also 5. So the two centers of the circles together would make 10. So if we look at the bottom, we see here that the the length from the square edge here to the center of the circle is y, right? 
on this circle and that would mean the exact same thing on this circle since these circles are identical. So here we have y plus x plus y is the exact same as this side length here which is just equal to 10. So y plus x plus y is equal to 10 and that we can simplify it is just going to be 2y plus x is equal to 10. So here I rewrote the equations that we have as a system of equations and remember what we want to do is solve for x. And in order to do this we're going to do substitution. But how do we do this? So we need to get if we want to solve for x here we need to get our bottom equation in terms of y. So then we can plug in our y equals, so it needs to say y equals, and then we can plug in our y equals into here. And then it'll just be all in one equation, which is insolvable for x. So in order to get our bottom equation for y equals, we will just subtract x. So 2y is equal to 10 minus x. We want to get y by itself. Then divide by 2. So that's equal to y is equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5 minus x over 2. So let me rewrite that in our system of equations. So we have this equation here and all we need to do is plug in our y here into the equation up there. So let's go ahead and do that. So the equation will be the same. 5 minus x squared plus, so instead of y squared, we're going to put in parentheses in place for y, our 5 minus x over 2 from this equation here. Remember, this is still all squared. This is equal to 25. So now we are going to need to simplify this. And how do we do this? Well, we have squared. So both of these, we have a term minus another term squared. And lucky for us, there is a binomial formula, which is comes very handy for this occasion. And the formula is the following. So if we have an a minus b squared, which is the case here for both of these, this is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. I don't know why I put that parentheses there. Okay, so this equation, this formula can be handy here because if we substitute the a and b's into this equation with our real values, such as our a would be both of these, and then our b and then our b would be these, these bottom values or the back values that are being subtracted. Then we can just plug it in. So let's do that. So our 5 is equal to our a. So this whole, this whole expression here would be a squared. So a 5 squared is equal to 25. Minus 2ab minus 2a is 5. B is x plus b squared. So our b is x. x squared is equal to, you guess it, x squared. And now here we have our plus in between these two expressions. And now we go back to using this binomial formula a squared, a is 5 again, that's 25, minus 2ab, so minus 2a is 5 again, our b this time is x over 2, plus b squared, so our x over 2 is squared, so how do you square a fraction? Well, when squaring a fraction, you just square the top and the bottom, and then, so x squared, x squared, over 4. So that's how you square a fraction. You just square the numerator and the denominator. So plus x squared over 4. And this all, of course, 
is going to be equal to 25. So now what we can do is we can simplify first of all. So let's go ahead and do that. So 25 minus 2 times 5 is 10 times x is 10x plus x squared plus 25 minus 2 times 5 is 10 again over x squared. So 10 times x squared is equal to 10x over 2 which then we subtract our 10 by 2 and that will equal give us 5x. And remember this is still being subtracted here. So minus 5x and I apologize I just noticed that I forgot the x over here. This is also important to not forget. So if you guys caught that before me thank you and I apologize. So this is 2 times 5, 10 times x, yes. That's correct. And then plus our x squared over 4 is equal to 25. Let's put our like terms together. So 25 plus 25 is equal to 50. Negative 10x minus 5x is minus 15x and our x squared plus x squared over 4 so x squared is equal to x squared over 1 and since this if we want to do addition with the same denominators we need to get the same common denominator so since we are adding it with x squared over 4 we need to have the same denominator so in order to get the same denominator we have to multiply the bottom and the top here by 4 so that will give us 4x squared sorry about that 4x squared over 4 so then we just add this together and we'll give 5x squared over 4 so plus 5x squared over 4 is equal to 25. I'm going to rewrite this a little neater by putting the x squared first and then the x and then the no variable. So 5x squared over 4 minus 15x plus 50 is equal to 25. If we want to factor for x, which is what we want to do, right? We want to solve for x. So when we want to do that, the easiest way that we would be able to do that is to have 0 on the right side, right? We need 0 on the right. So to have 0 on the right, we just subtract 25 from both sides. So 25 minus 25 is obviously 0. And 50 minus 25 is equal to 25. So I will rewrite that equation here set to 0 and we want to solve for x and we can do that by factoring. But first thing before you factor you want to check can I simplify or can you simplify this equation here. Because working with fractions here is kind of iffy for me at least. So let's see if we can simplify this. So let's try to remove the fraction. So when removing a fraction the easiest method to do this is just to multiply by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 5 fourths, reciprocal means that you flip the fraction around. The reciprocal of 5 fourths is 4 fifths. And remember, when you multiply this, you have to multiply it by every term. And then you also have to multiply it on the other side. That's very important. So 4 fifths times 5 fourths. The 5 and 4, they cancel out, so we are left with x squared minus 15x so our 15 times 4 is 60 right 15 times 4 is equal to 60 divided by 5 because that's in the denominator is equal to 12 so we're gonna still be minus minus 12x 
and then 25 we multiply it by 4 it's 100 divided by 5 is equal to 20 plus 20 and on our right side we're just going to do 0 times 4 fifths 0 times anything is always going to be 0 so now we have this equation simplified and now we can factor it so remember the easiest way since we have our coefficient of 1 here right because on our x squared when we factor or we put our the bottom the top we, so we make like an x like this this is as I was taught and our top the top value we're going to put our number is going to be the a so the coefficient of the x squared of the first term times the last term the c the constant and in the bottom we're going to put the b which is the coefficient of the second term so let's do that so a our coefficient of this although you don't see one when you don't see a coefficient that means that it is always going to be one so one times c c is 20 so our top number is going to be 20 and b is just going to be negative 12 right that's the coefficient here so now when finding the factors our x equals we need to find two numbers that will multiply to our top number and that will add to our bottom number so we need to have two numbers that will multiply to 20 and that will add to negative 12 so do you know two numbers I'll give you a few time I'll give you some time to think about it and then I'll show you which two numbers it is so the number that the two numbers that we are looking for are negative 10 and negative 2 because negative 10 times negative 2 is equal to 20 and negative 10 plus negative 2 is equal to negative 12 so this equation here is equal to x minus 10 times x minus 2 is equal to 0 so to find our x values we just need to make each of these one term 0 because they'll be multiplied by each other and if one of them is equal to 0 that will make the uh, everything equal to 0 so when multiplying if we put our x equals 10 here this will become 0 and then we multiply by 0 which makes this equal to 0 making it true or when this one is equal to 2 since 2 minus 2 is equal to 0 so these are our potential x values for our square and basically our side lengths but remember the question asks what is the area of the square so we are not done yet we have two potential answers of what our side length of x is, can be equal to so you may be thinking how do we know which side length is the correct one well let's look at it in a logical way so our side length if we if our side length is 10 that means that x is equal to 10 but if we look here this whole side here already is equal to 10 and this side is what much bigger than this here which means that it can logically just not be 10 so what it will be means it has to be 2 so since our side length is equal to 2 all we need to do to find the area is square that since it's a square 2 squared 2 times 2 is equal to 4 so that is the area of this red nose of this creature this character here so that is it remember normally if we were to have units we would have to put in our units squared but this problem does not seem to have units so there are no units to put so that is it for today's video thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and see you next time bye